Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, my name's Golden. Um, I'm gonna try and start something now that I hope will turn into something interesting um, with bug bounty and web hacking. Again, uh, I actually did order some equipment, but my camera kit still is pretty bad. There's gonna be a lot of ums and uhs and everything. And you're probably gonna see me looking to the side as I read off a script to make sure I get everything out there. Um, hopefully it'll get better as I go on, but uh, it is what it is for right now. So basically what I want to kind of try and do is I've noticed a couple other content creators in the space try and like get a theme and then stick to the theme um, and work into that theme, whether it be like showcasing tools or, um, you know, Nahamsek's new thing on attack surface management. Uh, that he's starting up. Uh, it's normally a series with a theme and, and it kind of goes with the theme and then there's things that go along with it. So one of the things that I kind of wanted to try and start, I'm a big gamer, um, by the way, any other gamers out there, let me know. It'd be cool to, cool to get together with some of you guys. Um, but I'm a big gamer. So one of the things that I like to do and that a lot of people like to do, right, uh, since games have came out has been achievement hunting, uh, finishing things, completionist, leveling up, uh, beating games, whatever it may be. Um, and actually, if you guys have done any looking on any of the bug bounty platforms, you'll notice that you can get points and level up and there's a leaderboard and recognition. And it kind of gave me this idea for a lot of the gamers out there and even people who aren't into video games really, but the number one way to not burn out at something uh, for me, has always been to make it fun or put a goal behind it or anything like that. So this new series that I'm going to start or just kind of work with right now is what I'm going to call gamified hacking. So it's going to take hacking, web app, penetration testing, bug bounties, whatever, um, and I'm going to try and put it into a gamified theme, whatever that may be. So this first video will be what I'll probably call the tutorial or getting started because um, that's the first thing you drop into, right? You get into a game. The first thing you go through is the tutorial, move left, move right, jump, roll, crouch, uh, whatever it may be. So that is this version of the tutorial. Um, and that's what I'm gonna go with. And then from there, I have a few ideas for the next couple of videos to try and keep it with. I'm not sure how big the series is gonna be or how long, um, but if it's interesting, let me know. If it's not interesting, let me know. And we can keep doing that or not doing that. But for now, that's kind of what I'm going to go with because that's kind of how I treat it in my day-to-day. -day. Keeps it fun, keeps it interesting. And again, I like it. Uh, the whole theme of leveling up and stuff like that, which which I will mention again later. But So this will be episode zero uh, in proper tech terms of gamified hacking. And it will be probably called the tutorial. So first things first is what do you need to get started? Other people have mentioned it before, but technically all you really need to get started, especially in bug bounties, uh, is a computer with an internet connection. Okay, I mean, if you're going towards a more corporate space, um, a lot of companies will look for tech degrees or, or the memes you see on the internet about looking for five years of experience for a beginner position. Um, that's a little bit different, but for bug bounty specifically, you don't need anything. You don't need any degrees, you don't need any certificates, you don't need any professional training of any kind. Um, you can pick it up and you can hit the road, run in with it, and you can and you can just learn by doing. Um, there's basically three different ways I'm going to kind of go over uh, learning and getting started in the tutorial. Um, but first, one of the big things kind of focusing in on bug hunting, since again, like corporate positions and, and web app pen testing normally takes some kind of experience, uh, degree, certificates, etc., um, we're kind of focusing more on bug bounty, getting started and getting into it with this one. Um, other people have talked about this, I know, but we'll just roll over it really quick. So the benefits of bug bounties versus like something else. Uh, number one is obviously income. You find a bug, it's not a duplicate and you have good impact, you get paid. That simple. Uh, no matter what the platform is, that it, it, it all pretty much works the same. So income is obviously always good. Again, part of this series is you can kind of gamify hacking real companies, right? It's, it's legal, it's encouraged, as long as you're following scope and following the terms of engagement, you're not doing anything wrong, right? And you're actually helping make the world a more secure place. There's companies out there like Facebook 
Netflix, Disney, Tesla, all these big companies are now pretty much involved in bug bounties in some way. So if, if you think it's cool, the idea of like actually finding a vulnerability or actually getting to hack on some of these big companies that you see every day or that you see in the news and all that kind of stuff and possibly finding something and them thanking you for it and hopefully paying you for it, then this is the right thing to do. There's also the edge cases where I, I actually have heard of and, and met other hunters that have actually gained full-time employment positions from their success in certain companies' scope of bug bounty hunting. Um, it doesn't happen all the time, but it does actually happen more often than you would maybe think. Um, so companies look at people being very successful in bug bounties, and there's more and more people putting it on resumes and, and bringing it to job interviews and that kind of stuff now that it's more accepted. And that's obviously something also that you can gain just from doing bug bounties, especially if you're more of a beginner in the field. There's the other thing. Uh, it's not quite as big of a deal with COVID, at least in the U.S. now. A lot, a lot of the full-time corporate jobs are remote at the moment. Um, but technically, bug bounties, you can work from anywhere, whenever, be your own boss, make your own hours, um, all that kind of stuff, right? So that's a small benefit too. I would argue the biggest benefit you're going to get is the community. Um, we're going to talk about getting involved in the community later and where you can find the community, but the bug bounty, uh, AppSec, etc. cetera, community is really good. There's always bad apples in every community, but if you know who to look for and you, and you go to the right places, there's some really, really amazing people in the space. Um, I promise. Now, obviously there are a few cons and if people want, we can make a video on it. I'm not a huge person on focusing on the cons. Like if you're going to do something, you shouldn't be sitting there focusing on the cons of it anyway. But obviously there are cons out there. Uh, triaging issues with bugs, your bugs and the security impact and the meaning, meaning of your bug is all based up to the company and their decision is final. You can try and converse it with them, but at the end of the day, they make the final decision on whether you get a bounty, what the bounty is, etc. Um, that has gotten a lot better recently too also. Um, another big thing is again, like I talked about in the last video, mental hacking, burnout, imposter syndrome. I, I mean, you can hack for 40 hours a week, all month and find nothing. It, it happens, it definitely happens a lot. Um, and that's something where normally if you put that amount of time into something and get what you would glean is nothing out of it, that's that mentally affects people a lot and you have to kind of come into it with the mentality of you're not always going to drop what you see on twitter or what you see on youtube you know oh, I, you know twenty thousand dollars worth of bugs a week and and you know be a million dollar hacker in your first year or your first five years or anything like that a lot of these people have been doing it for a long time um so you have to come in with the mindset again hence the gamified hacking series we're kind of starting is you have to come into it with your own goals, make them goals that you can achieve and that you would have fun achieving. Whether it be like getting points, getting 500 points on a platform or leveling up on a platform or just finding a bug on a company that you use every day. You really like Tesla, so your only goal is it would be super cool if I could find and get a bug triage that's not a duplicate on Tesla. Um, maybe that's something. Um, but it's all it's all kind of doing your own thing. But those few things are a con. Another con I would maybe just mention super quick, um, which is part of the reason why, why I'm trying to push out some of this free content is like any other field out there, there's a lot of people trying to sell things, whether it be courses or get bugs quick schemes or the uh, how to hack 101 and pay me $150 to learn this. I promise you, between this and a lot of the other good content creators content and the internet and something called Google, you can find everything you possibly need to know. You don't need to pay anyone anything. There's a very few resources where there's an exception to that, where very good people put out very good content and you're paying for the condensed content all in one area where you can get it all quick and easy. That is, in my opinion, worth it, but I'll, there's, quite a bit of situations where it's just scams. Um, so just be aware. Um, so I guess now what we'll roll into now is kind of where I would call it the three ways of, of gaining information of going through the tutorial, if you will, 
right? The first one is if you like to read. There's books on it. Um, basically, the Web Application Security Bible, if you will, uh, is the Web Application Hacker's Handbook. The newest version of that or the newest edition of that, um, it's huge. It's hundreds of pages. Do you have to read them all? No, but I mean, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, but whether it's spot reading or fully reading or whatever, that's obviously the number one thing to have. There's a company called No Starch Press that does a bunch of cybersecurity books. I've read a few, uh, the Bug Bounty Bootcamp, Hacking APIs, Hacker's Playbook, um, and I think there's a, there's a couple other ones. But if you go and just look in the cybersecurity section, there's a bunch on bug bounties, there's a bunch on different kind of hacking. Um, it's the best one of the best places to go for books. And then swapping over quick to the mental hacking, two books that I've read are Atomic Habits. Again, I'll, I'll throw links for all this in the bottom, but Atomic Habits is one that I've read, which is all about habits, creating habits, holding habits and how they're beneficial to achieving goals. The other one's called Grit, which is similar but different. It talks about making small, consistent progress over time and how having that mindset kind of brings you success. Um, so both of those, as far as the like mindset to getting things done, to getting involved in bug bounty, that's one of the things that I would necessarily go for. The next thing, if you're not like, if you're reading or you're ready to be past reading or whatever, the next thing you can do is look on the internet. There's information everywhere. Obviously, Google, like I said, number one thing. Once you get good at asking questions to Google and you're good at knowing what you're looking for, you're good to go. Until then, there's a couple of different things. Reddit is one of them. Um, I'm not super active on Reddit at the moment as far as like information security and web security, all that kind of stuff. I know there's communities out there. The number one biggest community for bug bounties, security, et cetera, right now is actually Twitter. Um, everyone's out on Twitter in this community. Everyone's posting on Twitter. All the new stuff is on Twitter. Um, so I would recommend you do that. I, I don't want to go list a bunch of names of people you should follow because if someone reads this or sees this, I guess, and I didn't mention their name, I don't want to make anyone upset because there's a long, long list of really cool people to go follow on Twitter. Um, so shameless plug, go to my Twitter and look at my followers. And that's probably a good list to start of people I would recommend because I follow them. Um, another thing to look at is bugs that are found in the real world. Uh, they can get disclosed after they're fixed normally, hopefully, so that other people can read them and you can see what people did hopefully and, and, and how the whole process worked. There's two ways, uh, HackerOne has a platform and a feed for it and BugCrowd has a feed for it. HackerOne's is called Hacktivity and BugCrowd's is called CrowdStream, I'm fairly certain. And you can go to both of those, scroll through, there's rankings, you can upvote and downvote just like Reddit so you can see some of the like, most popular disclosed bugs, read them, study them, what did they do, how did they see it, um, the report will have all the stuff in it that they had to give to the, the bug bounty team in order to get the bug anyway. So there should be enough information for you to go through there and try and like go step by step, play by play and see how they did, at least to some point. The other thing is there's something called pen tester land. I know that's a big, um, basically a database full of disclosed reports and there's other stuff out there too. Um, I, I don't look a whole bunch into that, but I know those three places are good places to go. The final place for online information that I would definitely go to is stuff like this. Uh, there's other YouTube channels, Twitch streamers, um, stuff like that, etc. that's out there. I will try and name a few, and again, I'll probably miss some, and I'm sorry, and there is a lot of good ones out there. Um, and I will try, like, if anyone wants to reach out to look for some of these other people, I can get you in touch. Um, Nahamsek, super good. Jason Haddix, Jay Haddix, super good. Stoke, super good. Ipsec, super good. Z-Wink is another one. Live Overflow is another one. Insider PhD is another one. And again, I, I know I'm missing a bunch and there's so many great ones out there. Again, all of them are on Twitter. Go find them on Twitter. Go follow other people on Twitter and I guarantee you, you'll find your way to these people because they're great. They have big communities because they deserve it. And they'll help you out just as much. The last thing, 
once you feel like you're ready to get started, just like a lot of people and just like hacking in general, the best way to learn the game is to play it or to do it. So the best way to learn hacking is to do it a lot of the time. A couple different places to do that. Number one place, above all, it's free. I don't know how it's still free and I hope it stays free forever. Port Swigger Web, Web sorry, Port Swigger Web Academy. They make Burp Suite, the company that made Burp Suite, which is like everyone's number one tool in web hacking pretty much. They have Port Swigger Web Academy. Sign up, use the community edition of Burp. It's free and the academy is free. It's the best place to go find bugs, hands-on, learn how to find them. I very highly recommend when you do the labs, if you can't do them without cheating and looking at the answer, go back and read the section about the bug see how they did it and take those steps and go back to the lab. Really try and do it without asking for an answer. And that goes for everything. There's no answers in the real world when you're trying to hack something live. So really try and do it without getting a bunch of help, asking for the answers, looking up the answers, etc. Some other places, Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, and Pentester Lab are three other really good resources. All three of them, I haven't been on them in a while, but all three of them, if I remember right, have a freemium version, like a, this is what you can do for free, and then this is the whole website for a monthly premium. But they're all very cheap per month, and they're all totally worth it. They're all great resources to practice. And again, all of them have leaderboards, completion badges, all that kind of stuff. So it's super cool. Um, Port Swigger Web Academy has the same thing too. They're all super good for the gamified hacking approach. Going in, setting a goal for yourself, saying I wanna complete this section or this section or finish all the beginner labs in Port Swinger and, and you know, complete that and you get a badge or try hack me, you can, there's a leaderboard and I wanna get uh, 10 spots up the leaderboard this week or get so many more points or something like that. It's always very easy with these platforms to set a goal and make moves towards your goal, right? So I think that's really all I want to go over this time. Again, this is like the very beginning video um, of a whole series that I'm going to probably dub Gamified Hacking. This is basically your tutorial to get you out there, get you some information, get you to know where to get more information, and get you a little bit hands-on. Hopefully some videos after this will be less of my face, and we'll just kind of throw my face in the corner and we'll actually start going over some stuff. Um, that'll kind of be some of the next videos going on. The reason why I kind of had to do another face cam video is because I actually just ordered some, some good streaming equipment, hopefully a better mic, a better webcam, so I can get up to my actual desktop instead of this little MacBook and you know get a box going and, and run some stuff and we can actually start playing the game together and getting through that. Um, I did kind of talk to some people and I probably will be doing some Twitch streaming, but the Twitch streaming will probably be based off of some automation stuff that I'm doing. So if you're a little bit further along and want to see some of that, um, the Twitch streams will probably be announced on Twitter and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. But if you've made it this far, thanks so much. I know it's kind of long winded. It was kind of a longer video than the last one, but thank you for sticking along for the beginning video of gamified hacking. Uh, the next one should be hopefully pretty soon once I get the equipment and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.